How's it going you awesome bunch of bakers? I hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I have another awesome breakfast recipe for you. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. Cold proofing is undoubtedly the best method for breakfast bakes because all the work is done the day ahead. When it comes to these bagels, even the glaze and the seeds are added the day before. All you need to do in the morning is wake up, switch on the oven and bake these bad boys. And they have all the great bagel characteristics. Chewy crust, soft interior, and they have a great depth of flavor, thanks to the long cold fermentation. And if you're not into bagels, I got cold proof ciabattas for you too, and some cold proofed English muffins coming soon. This method has really grown on me, and I'm sure all of us love freshly baked bread for breakfast, but this one might just be one of the ultimate ones. So if you want to have freshly baked bagels tomorrow for breakfast, keep watching, because after seeing this video, you'll be able to make these too. So let's get right to it and see what we need. For the dough, we'll need some white bread flour, some whole wheat bread flour, yeast, salt, a bit of honey, some olive oil, water, an egg for glazing, and some seeds for topping. You can of course top your bagels with whatever you like. You can swap the honey for some different syrup, or just leave it out. Boiling is what gives the bagels their distinct crust. To get a nice chew and a beautiful color, we'll need to boil them in a solution of water and baking soda. Traditionally, lye is used for this purpose, but this is less hassle. As for the equipment, we'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a rack for draining, a pot for boiling, a bowl for mixing our dough in, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush, and something to fish the bagels out of the water with. A spatula works perfectly for this purpose. It's not just the cold proofing method that I've been attached to lately. I've also been making all my breads with a no-knead method. And when you're making no-knead bread, temperature control is slightly different. Because we are not kneading the dough, it doesn't warm up that much. So we must use a lot warmer water than we normally would. My kitchen is only 20 degrees Celsius, which is around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm using water that's 28 degrees Celsius or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's start making our dough. In a large bowl, combine the water, the yeast, the salt, the oil, the honey and the whole wheat flour. When you're making bread with a no-knead method, you must ensure that everything is mixed extremely well. The honey and the salt should be completely dissolved and the whole wheat flour should be dispersed evenly throughout the water. And while a spatula would do the job, a whisk is the best tool for this. So once you combine all the ingredients in a bowl, give them good whisking. And once everything's melted and there's no lumps, add the final ingredient, the white flour. Then grab your scraper and mix this to a dough. Mix until there's no dry flour left. And if the scraper's not doing the job, continue on by hand. This dough is not sticky at all. Once it's all mixed up, pop it in a clean bowl and take its temperature. Around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit is what we're after. If your kitchen is warmer, you want your final dough temperature to be slightly lower. Okay, now we can cover this up, leave it to ferment for 40 minutes. And of course, if your dough came out warmer or cooler, adjust the fermentation times, down or up. Now halfway through bulk fermentation, we must give this dough a fold. Since we're not kneading this dough, we have to do something to give it some tightness. Pop the dough out on the table, flatten it out, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until you reach point where it started. And then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, pop it back into the bowl, cover it up, and leave it to ferment for another 40 minutes. Now it should start puffing up a little bit more. If it's fermenting rapidly, cut the fermentation time down, or else you risk overproofing your bagels. It's always best to be a bit conservative with the fermentation times when you're doing final cold proofing, because once the dough gets started, there's no stopping it. Okay, after bulk fermentation, divide the dough into five equal pieces, because we're making five bagels. Of course, you could make smaller ones, then divide them into smaller pieces, and then you'll get more. But if you want gigantic bagels, you could do four instead of five. Right, after dividing, we need to pre-shape. And it's the same process as the fold that we did earlier. Flatten the dough, fold the edge over the middle, keep going around in a circle until you reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up, tighten it against the table, pick the dough up, pinch the seam together, and that's your dough ball done. Now finish the remaining ones, cover the dough balls up, and then leave them to rest for 30 minutes. If your dough has been fermenting rapidly up until now, cut the resting time down to around 15 minutes. That will again just minimize the risk of overproofing. Ok, now I'll show you the easiest way to shape a bagel. Give the table and the dough ball a generous dusting of flour. Now use your index finger to poke a hole right through the bagel. Go right down to the table and then rub the dough against the table. You want to pierce the dough and create a hole. Now pick it up and gently stretch it out whilst turning the bagel. You can also perform this move, but just don't stretch it too aggressively, otherwise it may rip. Many little stretches is better than a few big ones. How big you make that hole is totally up to you. Just bear in mind that they will shrink as they rest and as you move them from place to place. What I always like to do is stretch them once, 
then grab my tray and before I place them on the tray, I stretch them gently once again. And this is pretty much the last chance you can do it. Give them one more slight stretch because right after this, they will be boiled. And you want to have your water already boiling at this point. If you leave the bagels to sit around and wait for the water to boil, they may overproof. I know it may seem like I'm doing this too late, but I filmed this before I started making the bagels. I like to let my water come up to a boil before I add the honey and the baking soda. I'm not sure it makes any difference, but that's just how I do it. So when your water starts boiling, add the honey, give it a good stir, let it dissolve, and then add the baking soda. It'll start bubbling like crazy, but don't worry, it's totally normal. Unless you have overfilled your pot, it won't cause any issues. Once the baking soda fizzles out, we can start boiling the bagels. I like to place them in with the top side down. That way the top of the bagel gets boiled first. When we flip it to boil it on the other side, it'll be the right side up. And that'll make it easier when we move it from the pot to the rack to cool down. We will not have to flip it again. You want to boil the bagels for no more than 20 seconds per side. There is no need to boil any longer than that. And if your pot is big enough, you can boil a few at the same time. Okay, after boiling, transfer the bagels to a rack to cool down. You could even pop the rack into the fridge to cool them down sooner. That is if there's enough space in there. But if you leave them at room temperature for around 10 minutes, that'll be sufficient. Now we need to glaze them. Grab one whisk egg, a brush, and then brush them generously all over. Doing it on a rack is the best option. This way, we can apply a generous glaze all over and not end up with a mess on our baking tray. You could even brush them, let them dry for 5 minutes and then brush them again for an extra thick glaze. Okay, last but not least, give them a generous sprinkling of seeds. I decided to use a mix of white and black sesame seeds, but you can use any seeds that you like, or any toppings that you like, or leave them plain, or use some different kind of glaze, or don't glaze them at all, it's all up to you. Here's a little thing I like to do to make the seeds stick. After I finish sprinkling them on, I gently press them in using the palm of my hand. They will still fall off, but you won't lose as many. You know how it is when you're cutting a seeded roll or a seeded bagel, it's like feeding the birds but that definitely doesn't deter me from using them. Okay, arrange your bagels on a baking tray, cover them up and cold proof them for 12 hours. The next morning, make sure to preheat your oven 210 degrees Celsius, fan off. And that is 410 degrees Fahrenheit for my American friends. Pull your beautiful bagels out of the fridge and from the fridge you can pop these bad boys right into the oven. They'll take around 20 minutes to bake. And once they're nicely golden brown all over, they're ready. Now all you need to do is leave them to cool down slightly before you tuck in. That's how you make cold proof, no need bagels. It's pretty simple. The main thing is not to over ferment them before you put them in the fridge. If your dough is a bit warmer than mine was, and if your kitchen is a little bit warmer, then keep the fermentation time down. You could even cut it in half just to be sure. It is quite a fail proof recipe though, because after being boiled, the bagel keeps its shape. So even if it overproofs a bit in the fridge, it'll still keep its shape. And you may not even notice it being overproofed. But you won't find these things out until you try. So what do you think this recipe? What's your favorite bread to bake in the morning? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.